behalf of the stewards, I welcome you to worship this morning at Wesley Methodist Church. And we welcome Peter Green to lead our worship. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Wesley. Today is the first Sunday of Advent and we rejoice as we approach the Christmas season. Our call to worship comes as a prayer. We light this first candle today in a time of political unrest and uncertainty. Remind us in these days that you are the light in the darkness which can never be put out and inspire us to shine for your light in our communities today and always. Amen. Our opening hymn of worship today is from Singing the Faith number 169. Come, thou long-expected Jesus. Let us share together in our prayers. Loving and gracious God, all praise and worship, glory and honour be yours as we, your people, enter once again into this season of Advent. From the centuries of darkness, you transcended the earth to bring light to the darkness hope for the hopeless, and joy where there was despair. Out of your great love for us, you offered the brightness of your light to transform the world with forgiveness and hope. In many ways today, we feel that we are living in a dark world, a world of hunger, poverty, disease and despair. Shatter the darkness, Lord, with the brilliance of your eternal light. We gather in worship, lighting a candle as a sign of hope, knowing that in dark times there is always a light that can be lit, the light of your presence in our lives. So we draw near to you now, with minds that want to listen, minds that want to be renewed by the name above all names, the name of Jesus. We come not only in praise and worship, but in confession, for we have turned away from what we know to be true. We have ignored what we should have believed and deceived ourselves with our own thoughts. Receive us as we confess our sins and renew us with the light of your presence that darkness may be turned into the brilliance of your ever-presence coming into our lives. And this our prayer we ask in your holy name. Amen. 
we share together as we pray the words that Jesus taught his disciples as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 60, reading verses 1 to 5. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the, on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. Thanks be to God. Next hymn reflects upon that reading and the darkness that the people to whom Isaiah was speaking. It is from Singing the Faith, number 175. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Light of the world, you step down.
The reading is taken from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 13, and starting to read at verse 24. Jesus is speaking with a few of his disciples. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is here. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day, or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door, to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Darkness and light. That's the theme of our worship this morning. I often find this time of the year a very depressing time. The autumn comes and the days begin to get shorter. We find ourselves in the gloom of cloud cover, mist darkness coming. It's just 4.30 in the afternoon and you're putting on lights at home, drawing curtains, preparing for a long evening. The days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer. Many feel closed in, depressed, despair. And yet here we are this morning on the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a season of preparation, a season when we prepare ourselves to celebrate the joy of the coming of Jesus, the coming of light into the darkness of this world. A few moments ago, Len read to us part of the prophecy of Isaiah, as Isaiah talked to the people about turning from their sin and God would come in a great light. They would see the new glory of Jerusalem. Arise, shine, the glory of the Lord is upon you, said Isaiah. Turn from your sin, turn to the Lord, ask for forgiveness. There are better times ahead, but you need to respond. Other nations, says Isaiah, live in the darkness, but the light of the Lord is upon you. Upon you the light of the Lord will shine. 
just as that promise comes true to us on this day of Advent, we celebrate the coming of the light of Jesus. Look around, said Isaiah, see what is happening. Look at the experiences that people are going through. You will see this and you will be filled with joy when the Lord comes. And then Kath brought to us our gospel reading this morning from Mark's gospel. Words that are written about Jesus' warnings of the future. A time of change. Maybe Mark's gospel was written about 30 or 40 years after Jesus' death when things were very different to what they were even when Jesus was crucified. There is a Jewish revolt taking place against the Roman Empire. And yet Rome's response is to crush any uprising. Judea is smashed. Jerusalem is destroyed. The temple is in ruins. Destruction is everywhere. And yet Jesus in this short passage in Mark's Gospel, gives a warning about things to come. Watch, he says. See what's happening around you. See what's going on. What signs are there? And you and I today, as we live in this year of change and uncertainty, are we looking around us? What is happening? Coronavirus. A couple of years ago, the Grenfell Tower fire. Or what local tragedies have there been in the last few months? Watch for the coming of light into the darkness. What are the signs we expect to see? Snowdrops, crocuses, daffodils are a sign for us normally of the coming of spring. And yet year by year these signs come earlier. The change of climate, the change that is happening in the world. Climate change is altering our seasons in a way in which we didn't expect. Jesus himself in that passage refers to the fig tree. He says, when you see the buds and the leaves coming, you know that it's spring. When you see the tree begin to wither and the leaves begin to fall, you know that colder days can be expected. The leaves begin to drop. Not only... Do these things give us signs? But, says Jesus, it is only God himself who knows the hour when these things will happen. So be on your watch. See what is happening around you. Be alert. I have a book up in my study written by Wendy Bray called The Art of Waiting. Are you good at waiting? Are you good at waiting for the light to come? I have a grandson who celebrated his 18th birthday this week. One thing he always says, you must not talk about Christmas until after I have had my birthday. Well, we can now talk about Christmas because his birthday was passed last Friday. He became 18. How good are we at waiting and watching? I will take you back to a story of when I was very much younger, when I was about 13 or 14 years old. The one thing I really wanted was a bedside radio. And I dropped 
broad hints about this was what I wanted for Christmas, what I needed in my bedroom. Where we lived, there was a furniture store at the top of the road, which also sold televisions and radios. And in the shop window, there was a, a small radio about this size, £9.15 shillings in those days. Came in three colours. You could have it in red, white or blue. And I fancied a white one. And I made that known to my mother and my father. I kept telling them what I wanted for Christmas was a radio. Well, I was home from school one day and there was nobody else in the house and so I began to look around to see what was there. Went into my parents' bedroom, looked under the dressing table, no, nothing there. Looked in my mother's wardrobe, nothing there. Looked in my father's wardrobe. And there, on the floor of the wardrobe, there was a package the exact size of one of those radios, half hidden by his gardening clothes. Had they got the message? Yes. This was it. Well, on Christmas Day, it was traditional that my sister and I always went into my parents' bedroom on Christmas morning to open our Christmas presents. And there in my parlour presents was a present wrapped in Christmas paper now. It had been wrapped when it was in the wardrobe in brown paper, but now Christmas paper. And it was with my presents. I made sure that my sister opened all her presents, completely finishing, opening the last one before I got to that one present that I desired so much. There I was, I could open it. I took off the paper and there it was. A Janeiro set, a sort of a Meccano. It wasn't a radio at all. I can, it's as though it was yesterday. I still can sense that feeling of disappointment in what I saw. My father also thought that Perhaps I would follow in his footsteps into the sort of engineering line, but that wasn't to be. No, it wasn't a radio. I'd been waiting so long, I was so certain I knew what it was, but it wasn't. What are we waiting for in this Advent? What are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? Will it be what we expect? The Messiah certainly wasn't what the shepherds expected. The King of Kings certainly wasn't what the wise men expected. In the darkness, as the light comes in this Advent season, what are you expecting to find? Lights, celebrations everywhere at this time of the year, but not for everyone. Some go to multiple Christmas dinners at this time of the year, but for others, it's loneliness. And no one else there. For some, Christmas is a lonely period. They will spend this time of Advent dreading the coming of Christmas Day and being alone. I always remember many years ago when we used to have a, a Christmas Day lunch for people who were by themselves at our old church. I took an elderly lady home 
on Christmas night. And as we approached her front door, she began to cry. And I thought, what have I done? What's wrong? She said, it's been such a wonderful day today. She said, it's the first time in eight years since my husband died that I've seen someone on Christmas Day. And I've talked to someone. We had a conversation. Do you know someone like that? Someone for whom Christmas will be a lonely time? Well, my daughter already has out her well-known Christmas decoration which says how many more sleeps there are before Christmas. They're waiting. Are we a, are we a waiting Christian people? Or are we complacent and satisfied with the darkness that surrounds us? The African-American civil rights movement have that well-known saying, stay woke, which came in the mid-1960s. It means stay awake for injustice around you. And out of that has come the black right rights movement of today. Advent. Be on your watch, says Jesus, for the light of the Saviour of the world is coming to you. Many will still live in darkness and many will still go through Christmas in darkness. Yet how can you and I Respond to the signs that we see. Respond to the people who need us. Us to bring the light of the name of Jesus into their life. May God bless each one of us and renew us as we seek to bring the light of God into a darkened world. We sing as our next hymn, a hymn which reflects upon people who are waiting for the darkness to move away and for light to come. Those who are hungry, those who live in poverty, those who search for hope. It's from Singing the Faith, number 706. Longing for light, we wait in darkness.
so we come to pray together our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord, giver of light that banishes darkness, we come to you with our prayers of intercession. We pray for all in this community of High Wycombe who feel lost and in despair due to the darkness and the presence of the pandemic situation. We remember those in our community experiencing the darkness of financial hardships with the loss of employment as we approach this Christmas season. We pray for those whose pain comes in the form of hunger, whilst others are preparing for feasts of food and celebration. There are those who are hungry on our street. We pray for people waiting for medical treatment, doctor's appointments and ill health which causes them the darkness of worry and stress. We remember the work of all medical staff, doctors, nurses, support workers and hospitals during this time of health crisis. We remember families in our community facing uncertainty and worry as we approach the Christmas season. We pray especially for those living alone or in care homes, feeling the stress of not being able to see their closest family members. Lord, we bring you our own personal prayers for those we would lift up before you this day, asking for your blessing and support that their darkness may be transformed into your eternal light. Heavenly Father, Take the darkness of our lives and fill them with the brilliance of your light, the light that cannot be extinguished. Take us and use us as a means of spreading your light amongst those with whom we meet, with those with whom we share the coming days, that they too may experience something of the light of Jesus. We ask these our prayers in your holy name. Amen. And do we come now to our final hymn of worship this morning? You will see that all our hymns have talked about darkness and light. Him is from Singing the Faith number 170. Darkness like a shroud covers the earth.
shine then go forth into the darkness taking the light of the world with you share that light give that light that others might experience the love and the joy and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with each one of us during this Advent season and in the days to come. For we ask it in his holy name. Amen. Amen.